The coastline of Andalusia is famous for its seafood, but these days you need to be up at the crack of dawn, and as I found out, you need patience and persistence in pursuit of your quarry. This little boat set out from a small harbour in Estepona and is fishing just offshore, dredging the seabed in search of shellfish. It's hard work and sometimes the rewards are scant. Here we are, some little tiny clams. These almecas? Almeja, chosha. Chosha. Chosha, hey. Now, it's worth thinking that when you sit in your smart restaurant and you eat a plate full of these and you wonder why they cost so much money, well, it's because guys like this are out here for hours and hours and hours dragging these heavy rakes across the ocean bed. And most of what they get is a load of old shells. And now these are going to be painstakingly picked through. That's a lot of... Ah, uh, that yes. It's a lot of hard work for a handful of clams and a pair of scallops. Something you can still find in great quantity along this coastline is the holiday maker. 30 years of mass tourism tainted the reputation of the Costa del Sol, but during the 90s it smartened up its act. Refurbished hotels, gleaming new marinas and lively beach bars now adorn the coastline. In the early evening, as it gets a bit cooler, a good way to work up an appetite is a gentle stroll along the beach. Do it every day. But, ha, that could put you off your dinner. This is Muscle Beach, and as you can see, it ain't no seafood joint. These beefy chaps and well-toned ladies almost seem to be enjoying themselves, but it all looks far too strenuous for my liking. However, there is a bar here. Well, that's a weight off my mind. I thought I'd show a sense of willingness and try to join him, but it's quite impossible and absolutely absurd. So I think I'll have an invigorating, healthy, vegetarian cocktail. Now, while you admire the pecs, abs, biceps and triceps on show here, I'll put together a killer cocktail, because I think this lot will need a stiff drink by the time they've finished. Estepona is a great little town in southern Spain, and Muscle Beach is a great bar. All I know about Muscle Beach was a hit record by Echo and the Bunnymen about 20 years ago. However, an invigorating and refreshing evening, lunchtime or first time in the morning, breakfast time cocktail with fresh mangoes. Ice is already in there. Some slices of fresh mango, quite a lot of those. Some very good fresh lime juice, which is excellent for you, very healthy, and for Added health, a little bit of fresh coconut milk, which is actually a lie, because I got it from the tin. And to make sure it tastes really good, whack a load of rum into it. All this carrot juice stuff is bad for you. So there's plenty of rum in there. And then Mark, who owns this calf, or this uh, chiringuita, made some wonderful cinnamon and orange flavored sugar syrup for me. So we put that all in there, like that. It's terribly simple. Pour it into a glass, already decorated with a very healthy piece of pineapple. To finish it off to perfection, you have an uncooked fruit kebab of exotic fruits. Oh, that bit's fallen off, but it doesn't really matter. You put a straw in there oh, and you nice. offered it to the proprietress, Delise, to see if she likes it or not. Delicious. OK, so what we're going to call that, we're going to name this original cocktail Muscle Beach Mango Delice, OK? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, don't Very you? Nice. That's really good. Right, back to work, boys. <laughs> I'll be at the bar if you need me. Now that this is more like it, this beach bar hosts a weekly bikini fashion show, which for some strange reason seems to attract more men than women. Can't think why.
Come on, boys, I've work to do. Synonymous, of course, with the Mediterranean are sardines. And what could be better? On the beach, in the sun, some sardines heavily encrusted with coarse sea salt placed onto a bamboo skewer and grilled slowly in front of a low, hot fire. Exquisite, delicious, simple and truly the Mediterranean. Without first-class ingredients, love and attention to detail, traditional dishes can become horrible clichés. And two superb clichés are the Spanish summer drink Tinta Verano, which is red wine, lemonade, lime juice and ice. It's not a sangria. And the other one is, of course, the iced Andalusian soup called gazpacho, which is made from green peppers, chopped onions, fresh tarragon, garlic, cucumber, and of course, tomato. Now, in my bucket here, I've already got some olive oil and some wine vinegar. So to begin with, I'm gonna add a handful of onions, a handful of tarragon, a handful of peppers, a few cloves of garlic, and some cucumber. Then, taking the average domestic home whisk, known as an outboard motor... <laughs> ..you begin to puree that. Pausing only for another sip of this excellently refreshing drink, you then tip a load of de-skinned and de-pipped chopped tomatoes. Like so. Then... <laughs> then I add my secret ingredient, which is natural, pure tomato puree, uncooked, unflavoured, untainted in any way, with lots of ice cubes in it. And we just continue. And I'll also add some sugar, salt and pepper. And that is it. Now, though I've put ice cubes in it, you might like, when it's particularly hot weather, to put it in the fridge for half an hour or so. And by the way, this will last in the fridge for several days. Then, to serve it, you whack a thing in the bowl, like that. And then you add a little chopped onion, a little chopped green pepper, some diced cucumber, some red peppers, and finally some croutons. Now, what they do in some restaurants here, after they've got it to this stage, they then pass it through a sieve and serve it in a glass as a drink, which is a very, very refreshing drink before lunch. However, I like it this way, and I don't like straining it because I like the soup to have a bit of body, a bit of texture. And I also like to have a glass of Tinto Verano. In the Costa del Sol, the setting sun is a signal for people to come out and play. And one of the most popular nighttime haunts is Puerto Venus, a sort of Spanish version of Saint Tropez. This marina complex attracts the rich and famous body beautifuls, and they in turn attract the tourists who turn up in their thousands to see how the other half live. Well, it's full of Ferraris, it's full of elegant women. It's a pretty purpose-built port. It's got lots of restaurants, lots of bars. It's a party town. They party till dawn. And I suppose if you came here and you rented Ferrari and you can rent one here, you could rent a Harley Davidson motorbike, rent a Jaguar, rent a Rolls Royce. You can pull a nice bird and you can go and have quite frankly, a relatively indifferent meal. Although the restaurants are pretty and fun, gastronomically, they're sort of okay. The nice thing is, 
You can watch the yachts, but bear in mind the people who have all the fun here are the guys and the girls that look after the yachts for the absentee rich people. I wouldn't want to live here, pretty as it is. All these people walk around evening after evening, not really spending any money, just making a bit of noise. It's lovely, it's pleasant. But I, one thing I think it has got, it's got the Spanish influence. And the Spanish are not cynical, rip-off people. If you want to pose, they'll help you pose. You want to be relaxed, they'll help you relax. They're a kind, friendly people. So you can be what you want to be here. The Spanish consider bullfighting to be an art form rather than a sport, an examination of man's intelligence and will pitted against the formidable strength of the bull. Miguel Rodriguez Miguelan, at the age of 20, has become a professional matador. He's not following a great family tradition. In fact, his father is a chef, and his mum, well, she probably worries a great deal. I asked Miguel how old he was when he started bullfighting. I was nine years old when I decided to become a bullfighter, and at the age of 11, I fished forth and killed a bull. Of course, they were very small bulls, so for me at that age, it was just a game. There was nothing frightening about it. Now, of course, it's different. When I get dressed in my suit of light, I transform myself into a matador. Even thought you are a matador in life. When you put on the suit of light, you start to concentrate on the fight and begin to wonder what might happen. You have to believe that everything will go the best possible way. You are risking your life, and that is one of the most significant things to consider. I have picked the most difficult job in the world, and I just feel so proud and happy to be part of it. When I first see the bull charge into the ring, I do have a split second when you really suffer and think, is this the one that will injure me or even kill me? Soon blank those thoughts out as you feel the energy of the bull rush past you. I know most tourists consider bullfighting a cruel sport, but I look upon fighting as an honorable profession man against a determined and brave adversary. After football, bullfighting is the most popular sport in Spain. When the moment of truth arrives and a bull has fought bravely, it is a shame to slay him. So it is my responsibility to make a swift and clean kill. There was a time in my life when I was profoundly influenced by the writing of Ernest Hemingway, and his descriptions of bullfighting I thought were magnificent. And I read and reread Death in the Afternoon. But when I finally came to Spain and actually went to look at a bullfight, I found it, quite frankly, most distasteful. But I do support the right for the Spanish to fight bulls. Within a few miles of the coast, you're steadily climbing the mountain roads. The lowlands of Andalusia are really quite beautiful, especially in spring. I'm heading to Ronda, perhaps one of the most famous white towns on the coast, and it's a huge tourist attraction. Because of its strategic position, 
Ronda was the last bastion of the Moors, who were finally driven out in the middle of the 14th century. Today, Ronda is a popular tourist destination. But this bridge, which I'm standing on, it's called the New Bridge, was built in 1751, but unfortunately, six years later, it collapsed, killing 50 people. So, in 1751, they started building it again, and it took 42 years to complete. Below me, under this bridge, is a prison, and that was the home for those luckless people awaiting the death penalty. And there are rumours, and I've asked the people from Ronda, they flatly, passionately, categorically deny that Franco, during the Civil War, invited, or should we say coerced, his foes into stepping off the bridge. One of the great things that the explorers did for Spanish cooking in the Middle Ages in the 15th century, I should say, Vasco de Gamo, John Cabot, Christopher Columbus, they brought back a very precious commodity, chocolate. In fact, the Spanish were drinking, eating and cooking with chocolate long before the French, very advanced at the time. And so I'm going to cook a classic dish of lobster in chocolate sauce. Sounds funny, tastes brilliant. Right, into the pan, a bit of olive oil and some butter. Some finely chopped onions, just a couple. Some garlic. Just let those soften for a second while I find my spoon. Now the second they're softened, we'll pop in our lobsters. Once again, I make the point they don't care too much about the fishing rules over here. I'd say these were all undersized, but it's not my problem. Lobsters go in. Then we're going to pop in some chilies. And some thin slices, slivers of ginger. Season those slightly with salt and pepper. And then we're going to pour in some sherry. And we just let those simmer away until they're cooked for about five or six minutes. Now, meanwhile, one of the classic dishes of Andalusia is something so simple that it's almost impossible to do. It's a whole fish covered in sea salt. This forms a crust around it. The fish cooks from the inside, so all the flavor is, in fact, hermetically sealed inside. Fish of this size is about a two pound bream, about 25 minutes in the oven. So that's going into the oven. Good, lobsters are cooked. I'm now gonna add a little drop of fresh orange juice. take the lobsters out onto their serving tray and then we'll make the sauce in just a second. The next bit of fun is we tip this chocolate. Now this is almost this is 70% chocolate, 74% chocolate and it's dark and it's unsweetened. A little bit more sherry. More orange juice. I'm going to thicken and enrich that with a bit of butter. Little parsley. A couple more chilies. Then, very simply, I need a cloth. Thank you. We just on the end here. I've got some rice cooked in saffron, with also added to it some toasted pine nuts, almonds, and raisins. It's a spectacular little number. 
so the fish is ready to be served. The last time I cooked this dish, or attempted to cook this dish, was in Italy, about uh, six years ago, and I made a complete pig's ear of it. But this time it looks as though I've got it. Mind you, the serving of it is big. Ow! Christ almighty, that's very hot salt on my little feet. Never mind. Sorry about the... I had to put a beep on that, because I'm not stopping and doing it again. That was a genuine industrial accident. Now I have to somehow get this little chap out of there and onto there. And then you can just take the skin off and you reveal the most wonderful flesh underneath. I made some hollandaise sauce, which, as you know, just a question of beating egg yolks with melted butter. But instead of using lemon juice, I flavoured it with oranges. So this is an orange hollandaise sauce. I'm also going to put some zest of orange into that. Thank you very much, my dear. That's brilliant. And then, now I've got my plate, I will take off a fillet of this. Like so. Enough with the bone there. A little bit of that. A little drop of this. That and some boiled potatoes, absolutely exquisite. Once again, with cooking here in the Mediterranean, it's terribly simple. It's the freshness of the produce, the simplicity of the cooking, and the immediacy of serving that counts. There it is, lovely. I'm very pleased to say that Spanish food is in rude health. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that Spanish cuisine is more than a match for anything I've experienced so far in my journey through the Med. Still, all good things come to an end, and finally so is my time in Spain. Now it's just a short hop across the Gibraltar Straits for my next destination, where Arab culture and flavours abound. I'm heading off to North Africa. <laughs>